Hello everybody, in this video we're going to look at online password cracking with Kali Linux and Hydra versus a Windows 2022 server. Alright, let's get going. So first, online password crack. What does that mean? It just means that the computer is on when you're attacking it. So that means it has defenses. In the movies, defenses might be people on horses defending the castle. In the computer world, defenses are things like firewalls and account lockouts. Any computer that's online can be attacked with an online password crack, but they are really, really, really slow, and that's something you're gonna see in the video. Online password cracking is the most common type of cracking you'll see in movies. This is an old college humor video that shows, I think, the 34 most dumb hacking scenes in movies ever. Basically, anytime that somebody's typing at a keyboard really, really fast and facing off against a computer that's on, that is an online crack. It is, truthfully, a really, really unrealistic way of cracking because it's so slow, and hopefully you'll see that when we do the lab. To do this lab, we're going to need two virtual machines. One is the attacker, and one is the machine being attacked. The machine being attacked will be a Windows 2022 server install. So that's right here. The machine that's doing the attacking will be a Kali Linux virtual machine. So I'm going to download that right now because it takes some time. So I'm going to open up Chrome. I'm going to Google for Kali Linux. Click on the link. Once I get to the Kali download page, I'm going to scroll down, click on Live Boot, and download the point release live image, the recommended one. So I'll click this arrow to download, and then I wait. What this live image allows me to do is to create a virtual machine, boot that virtual machine to Kali Linux without having to do a full install. So again, I can use Kali Linux without having to install it on a machine. So now I'm going to open up the Windows 2022 virtual machine. I'll start it up. We are assuming that this virtual machine already exists and is installed. If you haven't installed it yet, check out the upper right of this video. There's a link to my video which shows how to install it. And actually, before we go any further, just want to take this right now as a checkpoint. You should have downloaded the Kali Linux ISO and you need to have a Windows 2022 virtual machine. If you don't have these two things, Please go back and make sure they are done before going on. Yes, yes. So first, I click Start to start the virtual machine. I'm going to input Control Alt Delete in the virtual machine. So I need to go Input Keyboard Insert Control Alt Delete right here. I'm going to type my password. The password that I always use is I love this class one two three dollar sign with a capital I. I'm going to close all of these windows here. I'll click on this right here twice so I can have the full screen. And my first step here is on the machine being attacked, I'm going to weaken the password policy. And the reason I'm doing this is if I'm trying to crack a password that's super long, that is super, super hard to do. It takes a lot of time. So I'm going to set the machine policy to allow me to have really, really short and bad passwords. So to do that, I'm going to go into the search bar here. I'm going to type local security policy. It should autocomplete for me. I'm going to click on this local security policy and the policy comes up. So what I'm looking to change is account policies, password policy. And I'm looking to change this right here. Password must meet complexity requirements. I'm going to turn that off. So I will select that password must meet complexity requirements. Disable it. Okay and now it's disabled. If you've a freshly installed system, then you're all ready to go. I'm just gonna point out, there is one other setting here, which you find in account lockout policy, and then the account lockout threshold. So this is the number of failed attempts that the computer will tolerate before it locks your account. And a real system might have this configured, but we're not gonna turn that on. Remember here, our goal is to allow weak passwords for demonstration purposes, which is not gonna be quite realistic, but otherwise this whole lab takes way too long. So now we close that window, and second thing I need to do is to create an account. And this is the account that's going to get hacked. So to do that, I'm going to the search bar, clicking on it, and I'll type computer management. It comes up right there. I'll click on it. So here we are. To make a user, I'm going to click on this right here, this little triangle, local users and groups. I'm going to right click on users and select new user. So for username, I'll make, I don't know, D-O. Oh, 
And for this password, I'm going to make a simple password, just the letter G. In the confirm password field, I'll type G again, and I'm going to uncheck user must change password at next logon. So this will simulate a user with the username of Dio, and the password is G. Now, no real person has a password this short, but this is really just to illustrate the process by which one does an online password crack. So I'll click create. So if I click on users, you'll see my user right here, Dio. Good. Now I'm going to need to make it so that the user can log on remotely. And so I'm going to add this DO, this DO user, to the remote desktop users group. So I'll click on groups here, double click it. I'm going to double click remote desktop users. And I'll click add. And in this field, I'm going to type my username, which is DO. I'll click OK. I'll click apply. I'll click OK. And there you go. After you do anything, you should verify it. So that's what I'll do now. I'll double click remote desktop users group. And you see that the DO user is in there. So now I'll click OK. I'm done with this. I'm going to stop here to do a checkpoint. You should have a weakened password policy. You should have made a user. And you should have added this user to the remote desktop group. That last part is super important. If this isn't done, please review the section. Get those done before you go on. Very nice, she's a chan. So the next thing we're going to do is to open up this server for remote logins, which simulates how a server might be in the real world. So to do that, we'll go to the search bar, we'll type remote desktop settings, click on remote desktop settings. We're going to enable remote desktop, confirm, we're going to click Advanced Settings. And we're going to uncheck this box here. Now, in the real world, this might be checked, but this is really just a demonstration of how an online crack works. So again, we're going to uncheck this, require computers to use network-level authentication to connect. We'll click Proceed anyway. And that's good. So then, we're going to check the IP address of this machine. And to do that, I'll go into VirtualBox Manager. And the reason I'm doing this is so I can verify that the network is bridged. So I right click on the virtual machine, select Settings, select Network, and I verify attached to says bridged, bridged adapter. And since it does, I can click OK and close this. So now I'm going to get the IP address of the Windows machine. The IP address is like a unique name or identifier on the network, basically because the attacking machine needs to know who it's attacking. So once again, I'll go into the search bar. I'll type CMD. I'll type IP config. And this right here is my address, 172.25.233.91. So at this point, my Windows machine is ready to be attacked. And we're going to see how we can attack it now. So I will put this machine aside for now. I'm going to go back to my VirtualBox manager and I'm going to make a new virtual machine. So I'll click new and we'll call this Kali, named after the operating system which is going to attack a Windows machine. I'll change the type to Linux and the version I'm going to change to Ubuntu 64-bit. I'll click next. I'm going to increase this memory to four gigabytes. I'll click next. I'll click next. And I'll click finish. So this is my virtual machine for Kali. I need to start it up to Kali though. So to do that, I'll right click it, click settings. I'm going to click storage. And on this thing right here that looks like a CD, I'm going to click it. Then on this other CD looking thing, I'm going to click that and it'll be a pull down. I'll select choose a disk file. And I'm going to select the live image that I just downloaded. So Kali Linux, there's going to be year and then live. And then I'll click open. I'll click OK here. And then I'll click start. So what I'm starting up here is something called Kali Linux. It's a different operating system from Windows or something like that or Mac OS 10, but it's specially made for hacking purposes. So I'll click in here. Click Capture and type Enter. And now it's starting up. 
I'll need to wait a little bit. And here we are. So now just as a review, remember I have two virtual machines. One is running Kali, that's the attacker. And one is running Windows, and that's the one that's being attacked. And just as a test, I'm going to see if the Kali machine can log into the Windows machine legitimately. And this is just a test to be sure that, that my system is working as I expect it to be working. Because a real legitimate system would have remote desktop on, I would be able to log into this machine remotely legitimately. So here we go. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to click this terminal right here. And I'm going to test the login. The command is R desktop, and then I'll need the IP address of the target. So if I don't remember that IP address, I can go to my VirtualBox manager here, double click the windows, and here it is, 172.25.233.91. So R desktop, 172.25.233.91. I'm going to type enter, and I'm going to accept the certificate. And so this is a logon screen right here. I'm going to try the user that I created. The user that I created was DO, and the password that I created was G. And you see that this logon works, and this simulates a logon from one computer to the other computer, as we might have in an everyday working system. Good. So now that I know it works, I'm going to close my desktop login, remote desktop login. If for some reason it does not work, could be a couple things. The first is that you have not created your user. I'm going to local users and groups, users. Second is that I might have forgotten my password. And if I need to reset that password, I'll right click here and click set password. The third is I might not have added this user to the remote desktop user group. So I go to groups here. Then I double click remote desktop users to be sure that my user is here. And the fourth is that my remote desktop settings might be wrong. So I type remote desktop settings here. Again, I need to enable remote desktop. And in advanced settings, I need to make sure this right here is unchecked. Require computers to use network level authentication. That should be unchecked. So if your remote logon test didn't work, please go back and check these things before going on. Yes! So now that that's all done, we're finally ready to show one machine basically hacking into another machine through remote desktop. I'm going to click this Kali logo here, applications, password attacks, online attacks, and I'm going to open it up and use Hydra-Graphical. So this is Hydra right here. I'm going to need to set a few things. So the first is single target. I'll need to put the IP here. If I don't remember the IP, I can always look. 172.25.233.91. And again, if you did not remember how to do that, you go to search bar, you type CMD, and then you type IP config. So that's the first thing. The second is protocol. I need to select RDP. So this is remote desktop protocol. And the output options, I want to use SSL, show attempts, and be verbose. So these three things checked off. So single target, protocol, and three checks. I'm going to switch tabs to passwords. I need to set the username. I need to select generate, and I'm going to change this. This will be one colon three colon A, big A, one. And what this means is it gives me from one to three characters, lowercase, uppercase, and numbers. So this is kind of a shorthand here. You'll have to take my word for it that this is how you do it. So again, two things, the username and generate, the generate options. Next, I'll select the tuning tab. The number of tasks I'm going to lower to four. This is something I found there's a limit to how fast you can try, and four is a good number. And then we're going to check off exit after first pair, both of these. So exit after first found pair per host, and exit after first found pair global. So again, in the tune tab, we set the number of tasks and check off these two boxes. Then I'll go to the start tab. And I'll click start. And here we're going to try to crack the password. And there it is. My login is DO. It first tries A, and then it tries B and C, and it keeps on going until it finds the password, which is G. I'm going to pause for a checkpoint here. If for some reason it did not crack the password, please be sure the settings are correct outlined here in red. Now I'm going to change this password and show you 
why it is that this type of cracking is not usually done. So I'll go back to my VirtualBox manager, go back to my Windows machine, close all of these, double click on users, right click on my username, set password, click proceed. So I'll change the password to GG, two letters, but let's give it a go. So I'm going to click OK here, and now the password is changed. So back to Kali Linux, once again, we're going to try to crack this password. I'm going to clear the output and start one more time. So here we go. And you see right away that even though it's only two characters, it takes a while. I'll speed up the video. And there it goes. A few minutes later, it finds the password GG. But much more slowly this time. <laughs> oh my god! The last thing I want to show here is how it looks from the perspective of the person being hacked. So to do that, I'm going to go back to my Windows Virtual Box. I'm still in Computer Management, but if you need to get there, again, you go to the search bar, you type Computer Management. You click on that. And here I am. And we're going to open up the Event Viewer. I opened up two. We're going to go to the Event Viewer. Windows Logs, and Security. And I'm going to open this up a little bit so you can see better. So if I'm being attacked, almost all computers will record failed logon attempts. So if I open one of these up and I look at the info, it says here it's a failed to log on, that the account that it tried to log on with was named Dio bad username, and this is the IP address that it came from. So this is the kind of thing that can be useful to people who work in cybersecurity who are defending attacks because they'll know, because they'll know what IP address is attacking me, and I could try to block this IP address, and they'll know which account is being attacked. So we could have this person try to change the password to something long, for example. And that is how an online password crack works from both the perspective of the attacker and the defender. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.